I'm going to show how to remove the spindle from a Hindi tie bar lathe. Um, I've looked online, I didn't see many videos on it, and uh, I thought I would put one out there for myself as well as others to benefit from. So the first thing we're going to do is remove the four guards. Uh, there's two screws in each, uh, two here, two here, two on this side, one here, and one here. I find it easier to get these guards out if back gears are engaged. Go ahead and do that. These screws that hold these guards on the cone head are different length, so you're going to want to keep track of them. If not, the guards won't go back on tight and in the right position. See, these two are slightly different length. You could put them back into the holes where they came out of or just tape them in the guards to make sure you don't get them mixed up. You also need to take this guard off first. This guard has two screws, one here and one here. Now we need to take this gear off so we can get this guard off. I've already loosened this, so it comes off. There's also a woodruff key on here. We need to get out so we don't lose it. Now I can finish taking this guard off. Again, there's two screws, one on each side. Okay. The next thing we're going to want to do is remove the back gears. So we'll disengage that. Kind of hard to see from this position, so I may move you. The first thing you're going to want to do is loosen this set screw out and remove here. That allows this handle to come off the shaft. And then there's a limiting screw back here that limits the amount of motion you can get here. Um, that doesn't have to be completely removed, but you can back it out enough that you'll get more motion. You see now it moves further. Um, off camera, I'm going to remove this set screw since it's hard for you to see. All right, the screw's backed out. So now we need to drive this shaft this way a little bit enough to get the handle off. You can't drive this shaft here all the way through because there's a woodruff key that holds this handle in place. And if you try, it's just going to run into the end of this big cast piece and uh, damage it. So we don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is, using a brass punch, drive this shaft a little bit this way. As you can see, the shaft has moved out some with this big eccentric piece here. So now that the handle's off, we're going to make sure we tap the shaft back in this way and grab this woodruff key and remove him. There we go. It comes out like that. And now this entire shaft can be pulled out. Uh, I'm going to grab the back gear casting in one piece kind of wiggle this in you might have to drive it with a plastic hammer and then we're going to pull it out now there's a series of lock collars and rings and gears that have to come off um, so we're going to pull this one off first my machine when I got it has this little brass piece that helps keep this gear uh, locked in or meshed in with the others. Uh, most machines don't have that. I think someone added it. Um, my machine also has little hex head set screws. Uh, I don't think they would have originally had it as this machine's over 100 years old, uh, but it makes it easier than a slotted one. So we'll loosen these. This is not the first time I've been into my lathe, and it's not the first time someone else has been in the lathe. Because you'll notice a lot of scoring and damage. Uh, but it is what it is. Make sure you turn it around and get all the set screws and screws out, loosened. If you have a hook wrench, 
it's a great time to use it. If not, you can buy one, find a pen wrench, or you can drive it with a brass drift uh, or pen punch if you absolutely have to. Uh, don't wail on it or you'll beat it up like this. There we go. Probably not the best thing to do, but you can hook this wrench on the set screw just for loosening it. I wouldn't try and break it off using this method. There we go. Next there's a gear on here that needs to come off. Gently drive it off. Light and easy taps on multiple sides. Once you start loosening this, it will allow the spindle to move longitudinally and sometimes it can wedge in the bearings. If it gets hard to turn, just give it a light tap back here to loosen it up. Note this is keyed and you don't want to lose that key. Next we're going to take this lock collar off. All these threads are right handed so we're going to rotate them counterclockwise to get them off. There's a spacer on here. And there's another ring that sits in here, but it tends to stick in there. But beware uh, in case it does bump off. As you can see, the threads on my spindle are kind of damaged uh, from whoever took it off last. My guess is they did not loosen the set screws and tried to drive the collar off. And that will tear stuff up. Before we can start trying to remove the spindle, this brass ring needs to come off uh, because it traps the spindle in here. And you'll see the flange in a minute. It unscrews this way. The next thing we need to do is loosen the set screw so that this lock collar can start being backed off so the spindle can move this way. Loosen this guy. Check to make sure there's no more set screws and there's not. Then put this in here. And start backing him off. So this becomes a game of loosening this lock collar and sliding everything this way. The cone head pulley here is easy to move, but the bowl gear can be a pain. Um, you can hit it with a plastic hammer around the periphery to get it going in this direction. If not, you may have to put a piece back here and then use clamps or something to pull it this way. We'll see how well it wants to move. So now we're just going to alternate between moving this lock collar this way some and driving the bull gear this way and driving the spindle this way. So as long as this moves freely, you got some room between here and your lock collar and you can keep on driving this guy. started to move some so we're going to go and back the collar off some more.
So, as you can see, we've made good progress. Most of the spindle is starting to come out. So now that this is loose, all this will slide this way. And we can keep on tapping this bolt gear. He's mostly loose. All right. So this weight will kind of trap the spindle in here. So you kind of want to reach up in here and lift up and wiggle it back and forth. And then it will start to come out. Now we have a spindle. Now we got to collect all the extra pieces. There's a spacer in here. There's the lock collar. Cone head. Cone. And then the bull gear. The last thing we need to do is push out this uh, bearing piece. And here's that ring I was talking about that sometimes sticks. Next there's this other brass ring that can be removed and if you want to clean the oiling system really well you're going to want to remove it because there's a drain back hole in the bottom. I'll show you the other one. So this is the front uh, of the front bearing or the inboard bearing and as you can see there's that little hole in there and that's what allows oil to flow back into the reservoir and there's one on the back as well under that other brass ring. These are the spindle bearings on the Hindi and you want to be really careful not to damage them. There's no replacements out there as you might imagine. This is the back one. It looks a little worse than the front one. You can see it's got some wear on the bottom. Uh, when I got this machine it was really poorly taken care of. Um, but it still works for my purposes. These are all the parts and pieces you're going to have when you're done. Uh, as I said, this is the spindle. There's a small ring on here that's a spacer that uh, deals with the thrust forces on it and you may have to shim it and we'll talk more about that later. It tends to stick really well to the spindle and it's hard to see. This is a closer view of the spindle. You can see this spacer in here. Uh, mine's loose but if you need to you can put like a razor blade or something right in that crack and try and go around and break it loose. Sometimes it can stick so well that you can't tell that it's a separate piece. Um, if you run into a situation where your handy spindle sticks while you're taking a heavy cut or you're drilling or you have a lot of force with the tailstock this way, that's because you need to put a shim in here. And this shim needs to go in between the spindle and the spacer. The spacer presses up against the front of the bearing and helps maintain the right distance between the conical bearings. As this wears though, the distance between the bearings and the spindle gets tighter and tighter until you put that force on it and then it squeezes it tight and it won't turn. So as I said, the way to alleviate that is to put this space back so this will have the right clearance under pressure. Another thing that may help is to go online. You can search for pictures of a Hindi spindle and you'll find uh, these nice drawings from the Hindi operator's manual. This fits my lathe, which is a 12 inch cone head tie bar, and it's got the nice disassembled drawing, and it's got names or keys for each of the parts. As you take the parts off, you may want to label them uh, according to what's on the diagram that may help you out. Uh, they don't really have names, just functions listed, but it's enough to help you keep organized.